<laughs> All right. Well, hey, Jake, you've been uh, looking at that license plate for a while. Are you trying to figure out how to put that on your drone? <laughs> I think so, Brent. I mean, I'm hearing about this remote ID thing for UAS, and it's on Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm about ready to strap this thing on and go. Yeah, call good, right? Remote ID, boom, problem solved. License plates that are big enough to see from the ground. (laughs) All right, so let's get into it quick so that we can just get you guys the quick and dirty information. Ten things you need to know about remote ID. Jakey hit us off with number one. All right, number one, so basic premise of a remote ID is UAS would broadcast a message with five things. The identity of the UAS, lat long, barometric pressure altitude, a timestamp, and an indication of emergency status. Number two, there are three categories of remote ID. Standard remote ID, limited remote ID, and no remote ID at all. <laughs> the free version. Uh, number three, standard remote ID would consist of a UAS that does two things. One connects to the internet and transmits through a remote ID USS. That is a mouthful. We're going to say it a bunch more though. And number two, broadcasts directly from the US itself. Number four, limited remote ID would consist of a UAS that can connect to the internet and transmit through a remote ID USS, but it does not broadcast this information from the UAS itself. And it has to operate within 400 feet of the control station. Ah, that's so short. Number five, UAS without remote ID capability will be limited to an FA recognized defined geographical area where other UAS like it get to play. That's right. Because if you're not going to join the party, you got to join the party somewhere and hang out in this. I don't know. <laughs> number six, <laughs> UAS identity can take the form of a serial number, which is ANSI standard serial number included in the aircraft registration, or take the form of a session ID that is randomly generated alphanumerical code assigned by the remote ID USS. Number seven, nearly all US owners and operators have to comply with this, except for four groups. Amateur built UAS, US government owned UAS, UAS weighing less than 0.55 pounds, looking at you Mavic Mini, and UAS produced for aeronautical research. Ooh, DJ, I was thinking when they made that, didn't they? They had a little, they got a globe somewhere, a magic crystal ball that they saw the future. (laughs) Anyways, number eight, the NPRM notice of proposed rulemaking, not national. I I flubbed that up earlier, but does include a provision that if internet connectivity is not available at takeoff or during flight, those with standard, which is like the premium package here, may continue to uh, fly as long as they are broadcasting directly from the UAS. Limited remote ID aircraft would not be allowed to take off or continue operations without internet connectivity. So standard is what you want. Yeah, number nine, remote ID USS are likely to be names that you already know. These are guys like AirMap, Skyward, Kitty Hawk, and there's like a list of 20 of them. Boom, number 10, the last. So the requirements that prohibit the operations of UAS without remote ID would begin 36 months after this rule goes into an effect. So no need to get all worried right now because number one, this is just a proposed rule. So it's not even an actual rule yet. And when it does become a real rule, we still have 36 months to figure out how we're going to deal with all this. Boom. Those are the 10 things you need to know. And we'll be giving you more podcasts and YouTubes coming up here as we dig deeper into the 319 pages of this proposed rule. There's some good stuff in there. We've got some really cool things coming up, too, that we are working on. So stay tuned. And until next time, that's it. (laughs) All right.